Robert Delise is going to get there. There's no question. He squares it. There it is. It's a number. And it's Bubba Rodriguez again. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. We're on episode 12, season one of the Houston Dynapod podcast. And as always, it's me, your host, Finister, Finn for short. And we are going to start another player profile right after I complain a little tiny bit about the United States failing to qualify for the Olympics yet again. I know we're all upset. Imagine how the players feel. There's not a single fucking player on that team who woke up before they played Honduras, Matt Jordan's favorite scouting ground, and said, you know what? Fucking hope we lose today. I would hate to go to Cater or Cutter and represent my country in the Olympics. I'd hate to fucking have the chance at a gold medal. We had a shit coach. How about that? He's been fired as a head coach, right? Twice? We didn't have a good head coach. You know who would have been a badass head coach for you 23s? You know his name. It rhymes with Schmab Schmamos. That's right. The gaffer of our club, our one and only club, Tab Ramos, would have been a much better fit. On the plus side, if you're watching the U.S. men's national team, you can make the argument that Serginio Dest is the best right back in the world right now. You truly can. He starts for Barcelona. Name a bigger club. Okay, Real Madrid. Name another bigger club. There isn't one. There's not. Fucking Messi plays at Barcelona. Suarez was at Barcelona. The United States has arguably the best right back in the game. Weston McKinney. One of the best central defensive midfielders in the game. Pelusic, one of the best wingers in the game. So before you start saying, American football is fucking bullshit, it's not. But our best athletes do not play soccer. Make the argument that they do. They don't. You know who'd be a badass goalkeeper? LeBron James. Six foot eight with a 14 foot wingspan and can jump through the ceiling? He'd be an amazing keeper. So let's get over the U23 debacle. It happens. Even Tanya Harding didn't win a medal. Just deal with it and move on. And I think the best way to move on is to start talking about Darwin Quintero. Now, this is a long one. Darwin has been around. He's like my ex-wife. He's been around. So, Mr. Quintero, the goal scientist. He's born September 19th, 1987. He's a Colombian. He plays as a forward for our club, our one and only club, the Houston Dynamo. This guy's played a whole bunch of roles through his career. Striker, winger, center attacking mid, central striker, excuse me, second striker. This guy is known for his pace, creativity, and technical ability. I thought he was a steal when we got him from Minnesota United. I still think he is. I think he's the best player on our team, without a doubt. Who's better? You could have made the argument that Elisa Minotas were better. Darwin does more than anybody. He's our best player. Let's talk about when he was a wee lad. So, he starts off with Panaderia Cudi, training school in Barca Football Club. They try to find a better spot for him, and they set up trials with teams in Cali. I've been watching a lot of Narcos, so I am very familiar with the gentlemen of Cali. You know, and my favorite is Pacho Herrera. I know he's gay. I don't care. If you've watched the series, you'd fall in love with that mustache too. So Darwin gets rejected by everybody who looks at him. However, he uh, is found by Umberto Ortiz, a scout at the time for Categoria Primera A Club Deportes Tolima. Quintero joins the Academy of Tolima in 2004, and he's a part of the youth side that won gold for men's football at the 2004 National Games of Colombia. That's a pretty good start, right? A year later, he makes his first team debut at the age of 18 in a one nothing loss. Oh, no. That's his only appearance, okay? They said that Darwin was too little. So he was placed on a special vitamin supplement and workout routine, 
reference Dolph Lundgren in Rocky IV for this one, in order to help Darwin bulk up. He gets called up to Talima's first team, which is managed by his former youth coach. He scores his first goal February 19th. A week later, he gets his first career hat trick. This guy went on to score 19 times in 42 appearances in his first full season. They finish top of the table, but they lose in the final. Darwin also makes his continental football debut in 2006 against Independiente Medellin. You know that place. Who lives there? Who used to live there? Pablo Escobar. You know, the guy that always looks like he's waiting for something. Um, he scores in the Copa Sudamericana. And then he scores again to give Tolima a 2-2 two two draw with Mineros de Guayana. With Tolima advancing on away goals. Tolima advanced to the round of 16 before they fall to eventual champions Pachuca. 2007, Quintero makes his Copa Libertadores debut. Scores once to give the team a win over Cerro Portina. In the final match of the group, Quintero scores once, but Tolima fall to fellow Colombian side Deportivo. Quintero and Tolima did not enjoy a successful 2007 league finish as they rounded out the table in 12th. So what does he do? You know, you're a young Colombian. You're scoring goals in South America. What makes sense at this point? I'll tell you what makes sense. It makes sense to go to the Russian Premier League, which is what Darwin does. And he joins FC Krilya Sovetev Samara, along with his fellow Colombian Juan Carlos Escobar. That's a name we can all get behind. Now, La Liga club Real Betis also shows interest in Quintero, but he joins Russia. The Russian side Krilya Sovetev. He makes his debut August 11th. And a loss to Spartak Moscow. August 25th, he starts. But they fall to St. Petersburg 3-1. He scores his first goal on October 28th. And a 3-0 win over Ruben Kazan. Darwin had a rough season. Wouldn't you, as a Colombian in Russia? Right? He scores one goal and plays 434 minutes. Which, for my athletes out there, that's five whole games. A little less. His team gets relegated along with Krasnodar. Okay? So then, in 2008, Quintero is sent on loan with an option to buy to Primera A club Deportivo Parera for the first half of the Russian Premier season. Quintero scores his first goal on April 6th in a 4-1 win to help defeat America de Cali. He scores twice in a 5-2 win over Deportivo Pasto on April 13th. And on April 27th, he scores once in a 3-3 draw with Atletico Huila. He ends this season with four goals and 12 appearances. And he was voted as the best player in the team by a fan club on the po- by, by a fan poll on the club website. So this is 2008 and there's a fan poll on the internet. I don't know about your World Wide Web acumen in 2008, but mine was pretty shitty. I can only imagine what it was like in Colombia. I'm pretty sure the only guys voting were the ones that sold cocaína. Okay? Quintero returns to Samara at the end of May. He trains with his Russian team for two weeks, but his coach, check this name out, Slutsky, also what I call my ex-wife, Slutsky, did not see a place for him in the team. Atletico Nacional came close to signing him with an agreement in place, but... Quintero turns to Deportivo Pereira after they exercise their option to buy. So Pereira finished at the bottom of the table. A new coach came in, Luis Fernando Suarez. August 24th, Quintero scores his first goal. Okay, He scores twice on September 14th against Cucuta Deportivo. Ten days later, he scores in the 90th minute to give Deportivo a 2-1 win over Junior or Junior. Yenier? Ha. Hanier? I know Hispanics with the J like an A, so when they write ha ha, they write J A J A. And I always thought forever they're saying ja 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 ja. They're not, they're saying ha ha. 
Suarez and Quintero helped Deportivo finish the top of the table, one spot above the relegation playoffs and the relegation table, which takes into account their performance over the past three seasons. In the second match of the second phase, Quintero scores a brace to give his team a 3-2 win. In the fourth match, he scores a hat trick to defeat Deportivo Cali 3-1. But Pereira finished second in the group. They don't go to the final. This season, Darwin tore it the fuck up. He scores 13 goals in 22 games. He's rated as one of the top performers of the season. His 13 goals were second to Freddy Montero's 16. After this season, there are some interest in Quintero from other Colombian clubs, like Atletico Nacional, Independiente de Santa Fe, as well as Serie A club, SS Lazio. However, you're a young Colombian, and there's an Italian giant knocking on the door. What do you do? I'll tell you what you do. You go to Mexico, and you join Club Santos Laguna for $4 million. Darwin joined Santos because, according to him, he was enjoying seeing the success other Colombians were having in Mexico. Not going to lie, after watching Narcos, sounds a lot like the cocaine trade. Colombians had success in Mexico, and then it went to the United States. You're going to see a pattern here. I don't understand this. Maybe it's like Colombian soccer players watched Narcos before it came out. Anyway, I just wrapped up Narcos Mexico. Sad ending for Diego Luna and his character. Felix, Felix and Gallardo. Anyway, it was a rough one. Still like Pacho. Even if he's gay, he had great shirts and a hot mustache. Hot mustache. So, in January 2009, Darwin goes to Cancun for training camp. That sounds fucking rough. He debuts on January 18th. Plays all 90 minutes against Club America. He starts the first two matches because of an injury to the star Ecuadorian striker Christian Benitez. But Darwin does not score in the first four matches. That causes some problems in Colombia and Mexico. So, the media is getting on to him for his lack of goals, but they're like, you know what, this, this fucking guy works hard. No, he doesn't score, but he works hard. Uh, it'd be great if you could do both. I'm sure they were saying. But, he gets on the board, he gets on the score sheet, 15th of February, against Los Guerreros, in a 2-1 to -one victory over Chivas. He comes on, in the CONCACAF Champions League, as a sub, in a defeat to Club Foot de Montreal. The impact, you know, Canadians in their crazy terms. He gets his first assist on March 1st. Okay. Oh. In the return leg of the CONCACAF Champions League, his team is trailing the impact 4-3 to three on aggregate. Quintero crosses the ball into the 6-yard box. And they score to level the aggregate at four. But Santos trailing away goals. Quintero then scores two fucking minutes later to give his team a win. 5-4 in aggregate. In two minutes, this guy had two goal involvements. This guy's a stud. Granted, this happened 13 years ago. But he's still a stud. Okay? So, um, this year... 2008-2009. Darwin scores 8 and assists 2 in 20 appearances. Ratios. One goal involvement every two games. Who else is that on par with? Well, if you're listening, you'd know it was Christian Ramirez. The 2009-2010 season, Darwin makes his first appearance against the Kansas City Wizards, and his team wins 3-1. He scores against Tigres in the semifinal, but they lose 3-2. to two. Oh, he scores again in a draw with Monarcas Morelia. He scores again against Cruz Azul. He gets his first assist against Estudiantes Tecos. Change of vow, and you'd have Estudiantes Tacos. Everybody likes tacos. He scores in, against uh, Querétaro. And he gets an assist in the 88th minute to give Santos a 1-0 win over Atlante. So, in this season, 
Okay? Darwin has a good year. He does. He scores six times with four assists. And his team qualifies for the playoffs. He gets an assist in the first leg of the quarterfinals as they defeat Pumas 2-1. to one. He gets another assist in the first leg of the semifinals. And he scores in the second leg as his team defeats Morelia 10-4 in aggregate. 10-4. to fucking four. That's a lot of goals. In the final. Ready for this? They lose on penalties in the second leg. And Toluca win their 10th league title in club history. Darwin's pretty good. Hopefully you're picking up on that. In the 2010-11 to season, he starts off strong. He scores once and assists three times in the first three games. But then he enters a terrible patch of form. He doesn't score at all the rest of the year. He manages one assist the rest of the year. Okay? Now in the playoffs, he comes back to life. He scores three times in two legs to beat Club America. He scores against Monterrey. But they lose 6-2 to two in aggregate. Okay? It's not great. April 2nd, he scores once and has an assist and a 3-0 to win over. 3 to nil win over Cruz Azul. But Darwin's got a temper. He headbutts Christian Jimenez. Okay? And he gets thrown out. Quintero alleges that Jimenez pushed him after another Cruz Azul player, Rogelio Chavez, had called Quintero an ape, sparking his reaction. Could you imagine if you called someone an ape in 2021? Everybody would be wearing shirts about a life mattering. I'm not knocking the movement at all. I agree with it. But man, it's amazing. Ten years ago, you call him an ape. He headbutts you. He gets thrown out. You get to play. Okay? But Chavez never admits to this. Darwin gets a six-match suspension. Okay? Three matches for violent conduct and another three for further aggression after being sent off. The suspension is later reduced to four matches. You know what? I'm okay with that. If you're going to call me an ape and I'm an African American, I'm, I'm a black person, I'm going to get pretty fucking mad. I am. I mean, I'm a white dude. Call me whatever you want. It doesn't bother me. But then again, like, why would it? It doesn't. I've been called, I got called a honky when I was like seven years old. I didn't know what it meant. My mom asked me, did you make any friends today? And I said, yeah. Tracy. His last name was Blackwell. The young African-American kid. Oh, yeah, how do you know your friends, my mom says. I said, well, he called me a honky, mom. And she goes, oh, baby, that doesn't mean what you think it means. So Darwin's got a little shit in his neck. I like it. Now the 2011 season, Quintero changes his jersey number. Because his son is born on March 3rd. Quintero changes his number to three. He comes off the bench in week one, gets an assist and a win. He scores his first goal in week two. Two matches later, he has one goal and one assist. Okay? <clears throat> this season is going to see Darwin absolutely be on fire. He is. He's on fire. All right? Now, in the 2012 Clausura, in a, in a 3 to 1 win over Club Tijuana, he gets his first assist of the season. Then, to round out the year, he has five goals and two assists in his last six games, bringing his season total to six goals and four assists in 14 appearances. Because of this, they qualify as the number one seed in the playoffs. They win the first round 6-4. to four. Darwin has a goal on each leg. Two goals. They get matched up with Tigris in the semifinal. Quintero has an assist, but they draw. Okay, In the second leg, Tigris jumps out to a two-goal lead. Darwin has an assist in the 87th minute. Two minutes later, 
he has another assist. This guy's fucking crunch. Seriously. This is the second time we've seen him do this. Now. His team goes to the final. In the first leg of the final, it's a 1-1 draw. In the second leg, Quintero steals the ball at midfield, dribbles to the edge of the penalty box before laying off a beautifully weighted pass for a goal. His team is able to hang on and win 2-1. to one. They win by aggregate 3-2, to two, and they get their fourth league title in club history. So Darwin has experienced success. This season, his team enjoys a deep run in the 2011-2012 CONCACAF Champions League. Quintero scores his first goal on July 27th. Okay? His team advances on aggregate over Olympia. You know them, right? Albert Elise. That's where he came from. Matt Jordan's got their coach on speed dial. September 13th, Quintero scores his second goal of the tournament. Yeah? In a 4-1 victory over the Colorado Rapids. Those guys suck. He makes his final three appearances in the group stage. He scores twice and assists another as Santos wins again. But he will miss the final three matches of the group stage in the quarterfinals due to an injury. He returns for the semifinal first leg and opens the scoring by assisting Hercules Gomez in the 30th minute. However, Toronto FC leveled the score seven minutes later. Guess what Darwin decides to do in this match? Oh, what's that? Did you guess red card? You'd be correct. He gets into an altercation with Toronto defender Ashton Morgan, prompting both benches to clear and run onto the field. Where's Pedro Martinez right now to throw a Don Zimmer to the ground? In the first leg of the final, after they beat Toronto, Quintero has some dangerous moments, but Santos fought him on a rate 2 0. In the second leg, okay, Quintero assists twice. Yep. But Monterey will score in the 82nd minute to deny Santos their first Continental Trophy. This guy almost won a CONCACAF League jump Championship. That's a big deal. Who else on our roster can say that? The 2020, the 2012-2013 season. <sighs> Darwin Quintero helps Santos beat Tigres. Okay, big deal, right? Santos scores a dramatic victory over Atlas on February 16th. And he finishes this tournament with four goals to help Santos return to the playoffs, the Liguilla. In the quarterfinals, after a scoreless leg, Darwin scores twice in the second to give Santos a 3-1 victory. But they're eliminated by Cruz Azul in the semifinals. Get this. My boy, Darwin the hothead. Gets his second yellow card in the 51st minute in the semis and is thrown out. He comes on the CONCACAF Champions League in 21st of August. Has a hat trick in a 5-0 victory over C.D. Aguilla. He finds the back of the net again to help Santos to a 3-1 victory over Toronto. After they lose the first leg of the quarterfinals to our club, our one and only club, the Houston Dynamo, 1-0, his team wins 3-0 to win the second leg to go to the semifinals. His team wins the first leg against the Sounders 1-0. And they manage a 1-1 tie with Quintero scoring to help them advance their second Champions League final, facing Monterrey once again. It doesn't end well. Okay, Monterrey beat Santos 4-2. Four to two, and they've beaten them now in consecutive CONCACAF Champions League finals. Quintero's six goals in the tournament tie him for the golden boot with Nicolas Munoz. Guys, if you haven't been paying attention, Darwin Quintero is a fucking stud. Some people were unhappy when he got signed. They were like, it's not enough. You were right. It wasn't enough. But with what we have now, it might be. 
Now, before the 2013-2014 season, Quintero signs a new contract with Santos Laguna that lasts until 2016. Okay. In the Copa MX, right, Darwin is going to finish with five goals, and he's the second highest scorer of the tournament. But Santos does not advance out of the group stage. In the 2013 Apertura, right, he gets off to a slow start. He doesn't get an assist or a goal until September 7th. And the season starts July 31st. He gets on the board in his seventh appearance. Okay, He doesn't get his first goal until September 27th, which is his ninth appearance. Even though he has a slow start, Quintero finishes with three goals and nine assists in 16 appearances to help Santos qualify for the playoffs. Now his nine assists were the most in the league. So we're seeing him shift right now. Okay, this guy's been a pro here for eight years. After eight years, we're seeing him shift from a goal scorer to a provider. Just like me. I'm a provider. I'm a single dad. Now, uh, in the first leg of the quarterfinals, Quintero scores two and assists for a third as Santos defeat Los Gallos Blancos, three to two. In the second leg, he scores two more. Okay, aggregate of six to three. This guy was involved in five of the six goals. It's a big deal. Darwin is unable, however, to keep up his scoring. And they lose to Club Leon. Yeah. That sucks. Now, in the 2014 Clasura, they start off with a one-to-one -one draw with Guadalajara. Guadalajara. He gets his first assist on February 1st against Toluca, and another assist against Tigres. Darwin is going to get his first goal of the season in the next match to give his team a 3-2 win. He also got an assist. All of this against Club Tijuana, where you can see the donkeys. On March 8th, he's going to score once and add two assists in a 4-2 victory against Club America. April 13th, he's going to score three times to help Santos defeat Atlante 4-3. He ends this season with six goals and eight assists in all 17 games. He tops Liga MX in assists. During the quarterfinals of the playoffs, Quintero would score once in the first leg as Santos lose to Club America 5-3. They win the return match 3-1 and advance on away goals. However, Santos is going to lose to Pachuca 2-0 in the first leg, but win 4-2 in the away leg. However, Pachuca are going to advance on the away goals. Now, let's get into his cup stuff here. Because of their performance, his team is going to qualify for the Copa Libertadores. Okay? Darwin is going to have an assist over Penarol. And an assist over Deportivo, what a name, Enzo Tigua, SC. Wow. Enzo Tigua, I can't say that fucking word. On March 25th, Quintero is going to score twice and assist for two more as Los Guerreros defeat Penarol 4-1. Santos advanced to the round of 16, but they're upset by Club Atletico Lanús in the round of 16 by an aggregate of 4-1 with the one goal being scored by... The goal scientist, Darwin Quintero. So, we are going to skip the 2014-2015 season. Okay? Darwin has a rough year. Two goals, nine assists, 17 appearances that year. They finished ninth place. Alright? Now, we're going to jump ahead. We're going to jump ahead to 2014. December 16th, 2014. On that day, Club America break the Liga MX transfer record by paying $10.3 million for Darwin Quintero. This guy broke the transfer record for the Mexican Professional League. 
If any of you were doubting him, you shouldn't be. He is the real deal. Now, he's going to make his debut. It's a win. He gets his first assist 21 days later. Okay? As his team wins 1-0. He gets another assist in the next match. Now, he finishes with one goal and two assists in the Clashora, but America finished second and qualified for Leguia. But America and Quintero have a disappointing playoff, and they lose in the first round to Pachuca. Despite all this, they did have a good CONCACAF run. He appears in the first leg with Deportivo Saprissa with an assist. They win 3-0. They win the second leg 2-0. In the semifinals, they lose 3-0. Okay? To see us Heridiano. In the second leg of this match against CS Heridiano, they are going to win 6 fucking nil. Yeah. Darwin scores in the fourth minute. Four minutes later, he has an assist. In the 19th minute, he has another assist. So in 19 minutes, this guy had three goal involvements. Yeah. So, because of this, Club America are going to advance to the final against Montreal Impact, where they win and win their sixth CONCACAF championship. Now, 2015-2016 season, Darwin scores in a Opening loss to Puebla. He scores again in a 4-0 win over Dorados de Sinaloa, which at this time, I think Maxi Rudy's playing there. Isn't he? Or Corona. Joe Corona might have been there at this time. You'd have to listen to Corona or Maxi's player profile. I have a memory like Dory. He's going to score again and assist also on November 1st. He's going to end the Apertura with four goals and three assists. Now in the quarterfinals of the playoffs, America advanced past Club Leon 5-3 on aggregate. They lose the first leg of the semis to Pumas. Quintero scores two quick goals in the second leg. And even though they win 3-1, they lose on aggregate 4-3. So, what happens next? I'll tell you, Darwin's going to make his first career appearance in the FIFA Club World Cup. He starts in a 2-1 loss to Gangzu Evergrande as a Chinese team. He did not feature in the fifth place game, which was a 2-1 win over TP Mazembe. In his first seven appearances in the 2016 Clashora, he has one assist and zero goals. He gets suspended for a red card in the seventh week. Man, don't fuck with Darwin. I'm going to tell you right now. I know he's little. What is he, 5'3"? This guy does not take shit from anybody. Quintero rules. Darwin is going to end this aperture with six goals and two assists. With five of these goals and one assist coming in the final five games following his suspension in the seventh week. Okay? Now, his team is going to go out in the semifinals of the Clashora to Monterey. But Darwin gets back to the CONCACAF Champions League. Okay? His team is going to win his second CONCACAF Champions League title. That's two. Are we counting this? This guy's won more trophies than anybody on our roster put together. 2016, he's going to make his appearance in a 2 0 win. Excuse me. He makes an appearance, he does not score. He scores in the next match, assists in the next one. Look, guys, there's there's a lot of stuff here. A lot. Let's sum up Darwin's Mexican career. He won a ton of shit. He scored a lot, and he had quite a few assists. This guy is, was the real deal. So what happens? Okay. Why is Darwin now in MLS? Now, I'll tell you. His time with Club America is a mixed bag. He was hot and cold. 
They won trophies, but they didn't think he lived up to the $10.3 million. The fans were critical. He was inconsistent. He had been booed off the pitch at times. So you know where you go if you're at a major Mexican club and they boo you off the pitch? You go to the nicest city in the United States, the most polite. You go to Minnesota, which actually right now with the trial of, uh, uh, what's his name? Floyd. It's not the nicest city in the world, is it? No, it's not. But March 31st, 2018, he joins the MLS side, Minnesota United. Ready for this? $200,000. America pay $10.3 million for him and they sell him for two hundred grand. Do you guys know how business works? He just lost $9.8 million. Excuse me, 10.1. Obviously, I don't know how business works either. When asked why, why did you go to Minnesota? Darwin says they needed a change, him and his family. They were intrigued by Minnesota's club plan, by Minnesota's plans for the future. All right. So as you guys know, his time with Minnesota is kind of mixed. All right. Hot and cold. He's named MLS Player of the Week in Week 19. He finishes the year with 15 assists, fourth most in the league. Despite that, Minnesota are going to finish 10th in the Western Conference, and they miss out on the playoffs by a whopping 13 points. It's a lot of points in MLS. Were you guys not using him properly? He was named to the All-Star Game. He had six assists in the final eight games. He only scored once. But what you're going to notice about Darwin is as he's aging, he becomes more of a provider. He does. It's just, it's, it's very simple. Right? It is. So, what is a long one? Whew, we're still going. So his final season in Minnesota, not a good one. Not a good one. Even though he wins the Open Cup Golden Boot and is named player of the tournament, uh, his contract option is declined. But by the end of the 2019 season, even though they decline his contract, Quintero has the most goals and most assists in the club's three-year history. So this guy sets records, okay? And you let him go. How much did you make off of him, Minnesota? Minnesota. Well, the Dynamo traded Marlon Harrison and six hundred grand for Darwin Quintero. Oh, the computer is talking to me. So Minnesota made four hundred thousand uh, dollars. As you know, this is the COVID year. Darwin is hurt, so he misses the opener. He comes off the bench in a horrendous four 0 loss to Kansas City. Then the MLS season gets paused. July 13th, he gets two assists in a 3-3 draw with LAFC. We saw that. He scores in a 1-1 draw with the LA Galaxy. 25th of August, he has two goals and assists to help us win 5-2 over Sporting KC. That was on the road. I watched that game on TV. That shit was wild. How high were your hopes after that win? Through the roof, I bet. Yeah, fucking bet they were. Little did we know we'd come crashing down like a goddamn airplane with no engines. After his phenomenal outing against Sporting KC, he scores against his former club, Minnesota United, in a 3-0 ass-whooping on September 2nd. Two weeks in a row, he's on the team of the week. September 5th, he has two assists as we beat Sporting KC 2-1. September 19th, Darwin has a goal from the top of the box to help us draw against Minnesota. He has a very strong opening season with us. His lone season. Seven goals and ten assists in 22 games. That's fucking good. He was tied for the most assists in the league. But as you know, our club, our one and only club, the Houston Dynamo, we finished dead ass last. We missed the playoffs. Now, internationally, somehow, some way, Darwin's not getting caught up any fucking day. 
He's appeared in a friendly in 2009. He has not been called up for the Colombian team since 2012, although he says he still hopes to rejoin the national team and represent his country. So let's talk career stats. Darwin has a total of 519 games, 151 goals, and 128 assists. That's 279 goal involvements in 519 games. That's better than one every two games. As of right now, statistically, Darwin Quintero is our best player. On FIFA, that's right, I said it, he's our best player. On Football Manager, yep, that one too, he's our best player. This guy is our best player, okay? And he's 32 years old? Let me scroll up. How old is Darwin? Holy shit. He's 33 years old. 34 years old. Now, if you go off of last year, okay? Seven goals and 10 assists, 17 involvements in 22 games. If we play a full season, you're looking at 28 involvements over 36, 38 games. Do I think he will capture these numbers? No. It's fucking crazy. He will lead our team in assists. Yep, he will. He is going to be the guy setting up Memo, setting up Christian, setting up Fafa, setting up Maxi, and whoever else they put in front of him. He's going to get his goals. Will he break 10? No. Will he break 15 assists? Ooh. Probably not. What am I expecting? You're waiting for this, right? My prediction. I think in the 2021-2022 MLS season, Darwin scores. Ready for this? I think he's going to score right around 10 goals and have right around 15 assists. I think he's going to be a player of the week multiple times. I think he's going to be our player of the week more than anybody else. We are going to go as Darwin Quintero goes. We are built and we are looking to score. That's what I'm seeing from us this preseason. We are stacked with forwards. We're decent with attacking midfield options. Defensively, we're nothing. nothing's going to scare anybody. If we'd had Salcedo and Parker, that's one thing. Struna and Parker, that's one thing. But we got Parker, and we don't know who the other one is. But we're going to go how Darwin Quintero goes. He's the best player on our team. I truly believe he's actually one of the best players in the league at the, center, the, the uh, attacking midfielder spot. I do. So guys, this has been a long one. Thank you for hanging in there if you're still with us. Once again, it's me. Me, your host, Finister, Finn for short. If you like the show, rate, review, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your mom, tell your dad, tell whomever. Tell the girl you met at the bar. I did. And then she started talking to someone else. Next time, we're going to do Fafa Pakal. A lot of demand for him. This time, it was Darwin Quintero. Until we talk about Fafa, go Dynamo. Albert Delis is going to get there. There's no question. He squares it. There it is. It's another. And it's Bubba Rodriguez again. 